this is our third part of our lesson today so let me turn on the scriptures this is our third part Lord teach us to pray Matthew 6 and 5 when thou prayest thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are for they love to pray standing in the synagogues in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men verily I say unto you they have their reward but thou when thou prayest enter into thy closet when thou shut thy door pray to thy father which is in secret and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly but when you pray use not vain repetitions as the heathen do for they think they shall be heard for their much speaking you know a lot of times in praying i've had to pray at night in the loneliest hours there can be when you have no one you can call on and talk to you have people that come in and take care of you all the night, but you still do not have that close companion to pray with. And I've had to pray. I've had to pray through, get an answer for things. But God teaches us in those dark hours to trust in Him. Because in our darkest moment, He's still the light that we can see by I had a lady when I was pastor and told me she felt like she was living in a dark, dark tunnel. And I told her, she said, I see a little light at the end of the tunnel. I said, sis, just trust in the Lord. He is the light. He is the light. That's why God told me to tell her that he was the light just to trust him. And she could get to the end of her tunnel in the light. Cheer and great loss. Another prayer warrior I want to discuss. Two more. This one and John. Paul was a great prayer warrior. We know how that after his conversion, when he saw the light shining bright in his eyes and scales got on his eyes, that he learned a lot about prayer, didn't he? Now he was a Pharisee that prayed a lot. But he still didn't know how to pray. Amen. Had a lot of practice. Many hours in prayer. But he still had not met the Lord. And I titled this message, Lord, teach us to pray. And this turned out to be one of the greatest prayer warriors of Paul's day. Acts 27, verse 21. But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, you should have hearkened unto me and not have loosed from Crete and to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you but of the ship. And there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God, that it shall be even as it was told me. Howbeit, we must be cast upon a certain island, when the fourteenth night was come, and we, as we were driven up and down in Adria, about midnight the shipmen deemed that we drew near to some country. They drew near and sounded and found it twenty fathoms. When they'd gone a little further, they sounded again and found it fifteen fathoms. Then fearing lest we should fall upon the rocks, they cast four anchors out in the stern and wished for the day. And as these men, the shipmen, were about to flee out of the ship, when they had let down the boat into the sea, under color as though they would have cast anchors 
out of the foreship. In this darkest of Paul's nights, spent out on a ship in a hurricane or a great force of wind called a Eurocladon, they began to realize they were in great distress. No longer were they worried about taking care of the ship. They was worried about even if they'd survived. These men, I'm sure, prayed to their God, but Paul prayed to his God and got a prayer through. He come to the realization they were going to live because an angel stood by him. Not just any angel, the angel of God stood by him and told him. What did he tell him? Some good news? No, they didn't tell him good news. They told him he's going to suffer more. But he told him that wasn't the place where it would end. He wasn't going to be drowned in a boat. He was going before Caesar. What these people did was they sounded to find the depth of the sea. They found out they were coming upon a certain land. And so it was night and it was dark and they were wishing for the day. And Paul told them again, take some meat because it's been 14 days since you ate anything. And they took some, some food. They were strong for their swim. And when the next day came, they had to swim to the island. Now how in the world can you tell men in the darkest of night, in the hardest of times, to be of good cheer? How can you do that unless you're prayed through and have faith and confidence in God? This last prayer warrior I want to talk about is John the Revelator. Redeemed by his blood. Revelation 5.1 And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? No man in heaven, nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not. Behold, the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seal, seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits sent forth into all the earth. He came and looked and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. When he had taken the book, the four and twenty, four beasts and twenty, four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. John the Revelator was the one receiving this vision. And he came to realize that he couldn't get to reigning on the throne without the Lamb opening up the book. He thought there was nobody in heaven or earth that could open that book. Then out stepped the Lamb, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, stood in the midst of the elders, having seven horns and seven eyes, 
which are the seven spirits of God. He took the book. When he had taken the book, all kind of worship started going on. And they sang the new song. Thou art worthy to take the book. If we go and realize that in Revelation 10, the 10th chapter, it appears very much like this same lamb shining in his strength, clothed with a cloud, feet like burnished brass. On his head was a crown of a rainbow. And he stood out and roared like a lion. Roaring like a lion. And he had proclaimed that the mystery of God was finished. It compares to this time when the seals were loosed because the mystery of God was bound up in this book too. And when those seals were opened, the mystery of God took on its finishing stages. Then we see the seven seals of the book open and the seven trumpets. And at that seventh trumpet, we see Jesus Christ the righteous standing on the cloud, reaping the harvest of the earth, redeemed by His blood. The Lamb slain before the foundations of the world. Before Calvary, His blood was already purposed to be spilled. And after Calvary, his blood was spilled and started washing away the sins of the world. And in the closing chapters of earth's time, his blood is still alive. There's still power in his blood. And it's his blood that saves us today and will keep us in our future. Father, we thank you for these six great men of prayer. Jesus, Noah, Abram, Daniel, Paul, and John the Revelator, who taught us very much about what it meant to pray. I'm sure John the Revelator on the Isle of Patmos, as he was given this book of Revelation, had a lot of time in prayer. Because it says he was praying in the Spirit on the Lord's day when he received this vision. And you give us a blessing for reading and understanding this book. I pray you help us today to glorify you by praying in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let me get this shut down. Got an air mouse here. <coughs> and the rat shuts off once in a while. Let me get it shut down.